Oh yeah, have you sh- have you shaved, Ewan? I have. I well, you've seen my face. Pointiest beard. Are we talking like a trim or a full on like? Robot? I for the first because I I I told myself it'd be funny to not shave for the whole like couple of weeks we're going into quarantine, right? And it never ended. And it never ended. So I ended up with a fucking Rasputin beard. <laughs> and so as of this weekend just gone, I finally like neaten the fucker up. Uh, so I'm slowly like gonna... right before winter as well. Ah, what the fuck do got... I care? Winter's my season. I love how you've still got the John Waters moustache. Yeah. So no, it's I'm... just below a beard you could use to choke a bear in Siberia, and up top, stylish. <laughs> Refined. I'm your archetypal cavalier. Well, no, I'm sorry. Ollie's in the conversation. Ollie is your archetypal cavalier. Yeah, I'm personally. your secondary cavalier. The less attractive, uh, less attractive friend of the archetypal cavalier is is the aesthetic I rock. And I'm a few hundred years later or earlier, depending on how you want to look at it. Anywho, fucking sixty minutes past. We should start, shouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's have some reminders from last session. The alleged werewolf had smashed through upstairs. Slash big smash upstairs. <laughs> Coral hasn't tried fire yet. Uh, one remaining PTSD punter forbade? Question mark. Front door is smashed. Slash lightly barricaded. At least two more monsters out there. Or potentially one more out there, one more upstairs. And uh, don't know what this one means. Holborn wishes to stand on the butler's foot. Oh, that might Ooh. actually be just quite. Um, yeah, wasn't that for dropping his luggage? <laughs> yeah, I think that's just actually entirely non-metaphorical. That's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> what do, folks? Where are we but at? On the butler's foot. Uh, I'll point my camera towards like the stairway upstairs or wherever leads upstairs. Yeah, I think it was like a little. Um, you'd have to go behind the uh, behind the, uh, the the sort of the rear of the bar into the next room, and then there's uh, a stairway up there somewhere. Um, all right, yeah, I'll just set up at the foot of the stairs, <laughs> marching back there. Sure. I would like to out of my if my my box of stuff is inside the pub, right? Um, I, I, yes, I, I believe so. I was unloaded, so. Cool. Okay, I'm going to grab my largest wrench out of my mechanics toolbox. I have a four dots in mechanics tools background. I gave that to myself as a background. I assume that'll be fine because paranormal tools are a thing, so why not mechanics tools? I think that's probably fair. I love the reminder about fire and everyone is taking up fortified positions. <laughs> Just let me snap a pick. <laughs> You're lucky. If something doesn't move, you have to really hold it still to get a decent photo. And you're going to be fucking st- nope, carry on. Sorry, ignore me. Creed starts the tre- Creed starts the trend of Bigfoot photos fifty years early. <laughs> oh, I can't remember where it's from. It's that bit where every photo just looks like that Loch Ness photo. Where it's <laughs> things I, is that the Futurama? It's, it's the Futurama it's one where um, yeah. where they're in Roswell and. They get a really credulous guy to take pictures, and every picture looks like the weird blob. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Oh, also, what's the doorway situation by these stairs? There is no door. <laughs> you can hear crashing and smashing from upstairs. Not a blood curdling scream, but a brief, wet gurgle. You recall that the publican fled up here some time ago. Well, that guy's dead. <laughs> Cut short relatively quickly. I turn to the rest of the party. Sh- sh- shall we go up? No. I believe I'm already behind the bar, so I would like to go to the special bottle that Matey poured from, pocket it, and then just start <laughs> emptying out all of the rest of the liquor around the bar area. Define yeah. emptying out. As in, like, uncorking or unscrewing and then Are you, leaving like, upside the down tipped worst over. skunk pint? Are you, like, dousing the place in alcohol? <laughs> what are we doing, Carl? Oh, dousing, very much. Okay, cool, because, I like, no offence, but the skunk pipe was very much on the table. Hey, my tool bag's in here. <laughs> <laughs> As is your physical body. <laughs> uh, sure, Carl, add one bottle of best quality whiskey. 
to your inventory. I know we don't have quality in this system, but fuck it. Um, I, that thing was worth a point of resources. Tis indeed. I'm amazed you're not going for the till. <laughs> Does he <laughs> seem like he's made much money recently? No, but... He just he, made that he, resources he worth. He just made that resources <laughs> worth. That did only last the session, so at the very start of this one, uh, your man, fuck, <laughs> Sebastian Thornbury, hops on over to the till, speedily repockets his own money before going for the bottle of whiskey, stashing that inside his inner jacket pocket, and then just starts emptying as much stuff as he can, setting the pipes, uh, the pipes, the pumps on, like, full, grabbing more, ex- uh, gla- uh, grabbing every high-proof bottle of whiskey and, indeed, spirits he can find, even stuff as exotic as vodka, and just emptying it onto the floor. Holoburn sees the writing on the, f- on the wall and the alcohol on the floor, and immediately puts his wrench back, and I would like to uh, yeah, use my strength to try and get my chest of importing expensive things out of the building that's about to be burned to the ground. Strength athletics, please. Diff 7. Uh, similarly, I want to gather up my tools and bring them to where my camera is, in case I need to run quickly. <laughs> and from you, dex athletics, I guess. Diff 7. Uh, I'm going to spend a willpower on this, by the way. I'm Entirely not in a particular reasonable. hurry myself. Good thing I did. Good thing you did indeed. Do you have a specialty, Ollie? My strength is tall but stocky. I don't know if that was like I was thinking like broad shoulders kind of guy. I feel think. broad shoulders should apply for this, right? Like you're doing you're 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 like hot footing luggage out of there. Stocky shoulders would count, so we'll count that as a net of two successes, I think. Mm-hmm. We don't have young Nicholas. Do we have someone like Captain Snapper Snacker John? We've got Captain oh, Nicholas. Snack. He's just been really quiet. He's not said oh, anything. Right. He joined like 15 minutes ago. Actually, yeah. Nick, are you on mute? Because we haven't heard a word. You, you He's not on mute, but his mic might not be working. <laughs> my, my mic was on mute, but I haven't been speaking. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. He's been fine. He's letting you all get on with your shit. Exactly. T- Timothy hasn't got much else to do apart from just observe... Uh, <laughs> observe just, the fire starting. Wait, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for like the the fires at like the like the fire prep is at, like at optimal readiness, and then do like a dog whistle, and then see if they come in. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Hoban Twite, and please do correct me if I get anyone's characters mixed up at this point. It's Tuesday, and it may alarm you to know that I've had a couple. <clears throat> Hoban Twite with a uh, an almighty heft, discovers that hmm, maybe the butler wasn't deliberately spicing me when he completely dropped my luggage. This shit is fucking heavy, as he starts to high-toe his chest outside, out into the cold and the dark, and the other howling towards the boot of the car. <laughs> Don't have time for this shit. You can howl at me later. After yeah, did him, everyone else forget about the howling outside? Is that a, is that a bot nope. from Woodrow? I don't remember you spending willpower, but you might have. No, I didn't spend the willpower. I wasn't <laughs> a- in a particular rush, if that matters. I was just going to gather my things and plop them down by my camera. <laughs> Fair, so that's, that's, a, that's a bot from Woodrow, which means as you step away from your camera, there's a, a blur, a rush of motion, a sense of intense pressure from behind you as something rushes down the stairs in a dash and smashes out of the building, immediately past where your camera would have been perfectly placed to take an incredibly blurry and thoroughly useless shot. I fall to my knees (laughs) and yell, No, my shot! In the background, you can hear your camera begin to teeter as it risks falling over Dex Athletics again, Diff 6, to snatch it up. Alright. <laughs> it falls over, and on a simple failure, the lens cracks. I'll just win for and solemnly gather up my things and pack them into the chest. <laughs> Everyone else, what are we doing? Uh, a dog whistling comes from Popa Jack. <laughs> well, I, I presume we're, we're not going outside anymore. Uh, given yeah, that yeah. things ran out. No, uh, Holman Twite was. And um, Sebastian Thornbury is still like dousing the inside of the, the bar. The bar? The, sorry. Been uh, out in 
strange other places too long. Uh, okay. Sebastian Thornbury okay. is, is dousing the, the pub in alcohol with a clear um, intent to burn it to the ground. Yes, mm. I, I'd say I was waiting to do the dog whistle until optimal burning time, so once he's okay. doused Okay, so it's a held action then, sure. You feel free sort to interject thing, yeah. at any point and say that you're going to do your dog whistle. You're just waiting. Uh, from this point on, I'm just going to hang out by the nearest door. Technically, the nearest door is the smashed wall that the uh, unconfirmed lycanthrope... Lycanthrope? Lycanthrope. Uh, smashed through. Does that count as a door? It's a portal, I guess. Neato. Also, out of curiosity, is my door one way? Or would no, it's two way. Place? It's two way until you close it. Or rather, I mean, like, when I place it in the world, can you enter it from only one direction or from the back as well as the front? Um, I feel like it should be back as well as... Uh, sorry, I feel like it should be one way front rather than just back, but you get to define it. All right. Cool, what's everyone else doing? The howling around grows ever more intense. The I, I gotta be honest, my burning of the tavern was predicated on one of them being inside. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's not do that. Just gotta lure them in then, right? Wait, did the other one join me outside? Because that's worrying. <laughs> it did, it did. There's a creaking from outside, and... Uh, uh, Hoban, as you turn, you see a blur of movement. And then from everyone inside, can I take an agility, uh, dex agility, please, diff six. Uh, dex agility? You mean dex athletics? Sorry, yes, dex athletics. Oh. <laughs> I need to get these some athletics. What was that diff six, you say? Yes. Ah, one success now. Three successes. Sorry, but was that like dex over or just straight dex? Uh, dex over athletics, diff six. Dex. Oh, I'm sorry! I don't have a specialty. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Fucking hell, Carl. Can we just keep playing World of Darkness for the next few campaigns? <laughs> oh, no, we're going back to DH. Where Clearly, the world makes sense. <laughs> you, you're a luck siphon, Carl. Uh, cool, sorry. Someone's had a very slight issue, so I'm just going to deal with this real quick. Um, it'll probably take me about three or four minutes, uh, but I will be right back with you folks. Roleplay amongst yourself. There hasn't been any progress since I cut out like 30, 40 seconds ago, right? No. no. Um, it just appears that there is a blur of movement inside, which you're all dodging, and a blur of movement outside. Or, or, or it will be shortly becoming a blur of movement outside towards me, I suppose. I probably shouldn't put the, uh, the wrench away. Actually, did I put the wrench away? I think I said I did. I don't think it matters, to be honest. <laughs> I, I will punch a werewolf in the face, motherfucker, like, ain't tackling a strong inner-city London lad like myself. So you'll become a nice snack for a werewolf? Sh shut up, Carl. <coughs> <coughs> I can still have my gun as well. I can, I can, you know, ineffectively shoot it and annoy it. I can tickle its uh, mouth with my fine. crunchy bones. It's fine. While it's, while it's busy eating you to death, I'll get some good shots in with the elephant gun. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have the car we came in on anymore, do we? I, did, did that get Yeah, started? no, we still have that. No, we still have it, okay. It's the other car I've turned into a barricade. The yeah, three cars, yes. Some, someone else's car got <laughs> messed up. <laughs> yeah, someone else's car got destroyed. I don't know, that's it. You made a barricade out of two cars. The other car got messed up, and then our car is still okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I have sent out the messages. I may be slightly distracted uh, managing this on the side. Someone's trying to track someone else down. Um, cool. Uh, did we get any failures from the rolls there? Uh, yeah. I would have failed. No Failure or, simp uh, or botch? <laughs> no ones or anything. Got two fives. Cool, cool. So, 
Holland Twight. As you whirl, just after, like, hefting your crate, your case, into the boot of the car, the surprisingly capacious boot of the car, you see that blur of movement. Now, by my track, there were two cars formed into a fairly primitive barricade that you had to navigate past mm. to uh, get out of the building. You'd, I think, helped set up as a, like, ah, people can't get through these. With the help of a surprisingly hench butler. There was an additional car. A third of four. And this car has been sent flying into the building, smashing through the brickwork. What were the successes from the people who succeeded? Just one. Oh! You're Nicholas? Three. Cool. So, in that case, Sebastian Thornbury and uh, Timothy Popajack, entirely on the other side of the building when it happened, doing absolutely fine. Sebastian Thornbury mulling over whether or not to pour something out, neck it himself, or just set fire to what's already on the floor. You know, which is the best option here? Doesn't really want to set fire to the building as he's still in it, but, you know, who knows if they're going to come back in. Popajack, meanwhile, has his rifle out and trained on the windows, just happens to be far away. Reginald Foxley Smythe is directly in the path of the automobile. As I see the car go into the building, yeah. I take out the rag I always have on me, like in my pocket. It's like This is happening in a split second for the record. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, sure. If I in case you guys I just think that's not going to buff out. No. Like, you're you're about as far as but in your sentence by the time that uh the car has smashed through the building. Reginald Foxley Smythe instinctively and very luckily throws himself to the side. Meanwhilst, Woodrow Tango, oh dear, acting on instinct, is not in necessarily a bad way. It goes through a good deal of wall and bar front before it reaches him, but it, uh, <clears throat> it does bring a good deal of the superstructure down around you. Rocks falling. And though you're only superficially damaged, take a level of bashing health damage, you can't move very easily. The rocks seem to have encased you, the rocks. The bricks seem to have encased you. The building collapsed around you as it sprays inward in an implosion of uh, terracotta. <laughs> What do, folks? Quick, we must aid Tango and make our escape! Oh, yeah, I, I, I'll rush back in. I mean, I'll cover you. Get my camera and took it. <laughs> it squeaked. The howling from outside continues. Uh, sorry, just uh, need to get back to people. Uh, Roleplay amongst yourselves. Yeah, I go for the camera and talk it. Thank uh, you! <laughs> I'll uh, attempt to start digging out Tango. As soon as I make it inside. It's a miracle I've not been trapped by the by the creatures outside yet. Bloody uh, being quiet enough. <laughs> Maybe they are just not fans of, you know, a conservative government or a conservative mindset, and they can appreciate a fellow left-wing thinker in their field. <laughs> dogs with lycanthropy. I don't think they care about the political structure. And yet, temptation to give Ollie a willpower point as he panders ruthlessly to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, cool, right, yes, sorry, everything is fine now. Uh, what were we doing, folks? I think I'm, uh, gun-trained on the hole that's just appeared in the building. Uh, ready to curse and shoot. You train your gun, hopefully. Hoping against hope and pattern that the Let's next attack a... will come through an existing hole 
rather than another wall. What else was everyone else doing? I'm, I'm sure. getting Tango's gear. Yeah, he'd actually, to be fair to him, already explicitly packed it. So he's now, like, you can see one of his hands sticking out of a pile of rubble and, like, mulch from where another one of the... Uh, the remaining publican had been uh, twatted to pieces. Both wings of the bar... Bar? Pub. Now annihilated. Is Tango the butler? Tango? No. Reginald Foxley Smythe is the butler. Tango is a member of the Noblesse, as is Sebastian Thornbury and Timothy Popejack. Uh, You yourself are, like, I would say working class. If if anything, you're almost middle going on upper middle, seems to be. That's just not enough for your snooty butler, Reginald Foxley Smythe. You work for a living. (coughs) Just not cricket, old bean. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm burst through the door and try and help. Um, as soon as I've got a lay of the situation, try and pull him from the rub- rubble. You hear a growling yeah. and a swipe behind you. Feel an intense pressure. I'll take a courage check, difficulty seven, Ollie. As something whirls through the space where you were, seconds before making your mad dash back inside. An all-consuming fear gnaws at your bones. On zero successes, you feel yourself not freeze up exactly, but... You can't stop hearing that howling, that fatal howling, that primordial terror gnawing at the very core of your essence, chipping slowly away at the veneer of civilized human and revealing merely the terrified ape beneath. Needless to say, you are not in the best position to handle helping getting him out of the rubble. But you do make it back inside the house. Everyone else... Right, I'm going to be trying to get um, uh, what's his face Woodrow out from underneath the thing. Strength athletics, diff eight, please. <laughs> Don't dispend a willpower. The gentleman's in peril. Well, that's three successes. Do you have a specialty? No, I only have three points. Fair. Three successes, indeed. With a fury and a furor born of uh, an innate sense of obligation to the upper classes. Reginald goes about hurling the bricks off, impacting nearby walls, one almost winging Holborn twice. A damned labourer. As he staggers in through the door, instinctively terrified. You manage to in fairly record time on three successes, prize a a not too badly injured Woodrow Tango out of the rubble. Ah, Thank you so much, Reginald. Do you think my suit will clean up? (laughs) Reginald is overcome. But, Benji? Mm. Yeah, sorry. So, so, Woodrow's Woodrow's been hauled out then. Yes, and he asked you, do you think my suit will clean up? Uh, I'll get on to it as soon as I can, sir. <laughs> Thank you. For now, I have more pressing concerns about one's, about sir's personal uh, appearance. I would hate to see the suit further damaged with bloodshed. Quite. <clears throat> what do, gents? Right. You are trapped in a rapidly collapsing pub that keeps having cars thrown through the walls. <laughs> there are three remaining outside. This is exactly what we did not want to happen. What's the time? Does if you wouldn't mind taking position, eight, nine. position outside behind me, we'll make for the car. <clears throat> that is indeed the best course of action, lest our automobile be the next through the damn wall. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we should start this fire then, and let's get going. Hmm. Sir, why are we setting fire to the place? Well, there's still someone in here to eat, so once they come in, hopefully they'll set a light. The remaining cowering uh, barfly, the one who wouldn't even accept a gun, simply shivers in the fetal position beneath the table where he's been this whole time. So, as might I suggest that we take him with us, uh, we, we do need a local. And, I mean, he can always sit in the footwell. 
I suppose. <laughs> I'm internally pondering over the possibility of, you know, like just throwing him out and getting him to run as a distraction. Either works, sir. But he's uh, ever so slightly catatonic. Oh, you might be able to trick him into running, I guess, actually. What are we doing then, gents? Uh, I'm gonna, like, go. No, I'm gonna keep it internalized and just, like, line up behind the butler. Uh, before we do that, I should get the go guy ready to run. Uh, can I roll medicine to make him run? <laughs> medicine manipulation diff 8, please. That's three successes. That is indeed three successes. Okay, I have an idea about this. I'm going to quickly place down my elephant gun, draw my Webley, walk up behind him, haul him to his feet, stand behind him, fire the Webley behind him and slap him on the back of the head and go, RUN! <laughs> Alright, you're a bad person, but it works I am, but he's a... not. But it... is he a gentleman? Then it's not my problem. You don't know, but it definitely works. And he probably wasn't. A I gentleman guess. does not cower underneath a table. Judging by his reaction, if nothing else. As he runs out, out, out into the night, screaming, swearing, and crying, a victim of your absolutely abhorrent behavior. <laughs> Sirs, if we will follow me, I'll cover you. We'll go for the car. Right, I have to be right back quickly. Um, Creed, you can roll for me. Okay. I do have I do have willpower left. Use it if you have to. In that case, ooh, sorry. I'm going to confidently strut towards the car. Yep. Yep. Let's all go. <laughs> I'm gonna. I just run right back out again. Yep. But I will warn that something did take a swipe at my back. I'm sure it's fine. I'll have my toolkit with me. That's what's coming up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you're all running for the car. Yeah. It's not that far outside, uh, so I don't think it's going to be a huge roll to run straight to the car. We've pretty clearly established you can get out there fine. However, pulling out and driving, it's the top speed on a car from 1919. Probably like 25, 30 miles an hour would be my guess. Yeah. Oh, no, some of them go pretty fast. Uh, does anyone remember what this fucking thing was called? Oh, no. Ow. Nope. Because the top speed on a car in 1919 is actually 85 miles an hour, but that's the, like, oh, fastest that's car. That's impressive. It is incredibly impressive, right? You assume it's like, oh, 20 miles an hour, and yeah, silly, feral people. What? If we, what? At least probably 40 then, maybe 60? <coughs> Yeah, fair enough. I mean, we'll our car's like top of the line, brand new this year, sort of deal yeah, as well. So. so we'll assume it's not the fastest, fastest car in the world, but we'll say forty miles an hour, right? That seems reasonably fair, especially for country roads. Though I have portrayed this as unrealistically straight and with the trees cleared way back away from the edge, which is not how that would be, even slightly. I we suggest would... we don't go for the Austro Daimler Prince Henry, which can hit at eighty-five miles an hour. I see you too. Ugh, sorry, I see you too. Searched fastest car 1919 on Google. <laughs> Apparently, the Ford Model T is actually correct in 1920, though, which was 28 miles an hour. That's the average speed, or like the the most common car, I guess. Okay, yeah, and you've got a top of the line. So yeah, we'll call it 40 miles an hour. It's probably not accurate, but it feels fair, right? Um, cool. I will take. Find out when Benji gets back, right? Sorry. We'll find out when Benji gets back. Yeah, but we're not waiting that long. I will take... Mm, uh, I was going to say, I will take 1919 over Dex. No, that's not a stat. I will take um, Dex Drive, please. Difficulty 7. Who's driving? Am I driving? Because I can drive. Is it Benji? You or Benji? I, I don't know what Benji's drive actually is. I'm just having a look now. I've got a drive of 4 and a oh, dexterity like of Benji three. has a drive of 0 and a Dex um, also of 0. You're both average... No, you both got seven. Also, um, I think you'd actually have to manually wrestle Reginald Foxley Smythe away from driving, honestly. Okay. All right. And then you can drive, and he shall use the willpower. 
cowardice. I'm going to make sure to slam the boot shot and make sure it's all good before I jump in the car, I suppose. Uh, Have we got like a, a back window? Yeah, we should do. We got a soft top. Yeah, so I was going to say, you don't really have a back window. Oh, okay, nice. Let's drive it. We're going straight for the roll. Seven. Uh, yeah, let's drive Dex, diff seven. Drive returned. Do you have a back window oh. on the Ford Model T? Yeah, but a Ford right. Model T doesn't have a soft top. Uh, I just commit. Oh, I was about to commit willpower yes. and roll for you. You're driving us out of here, sir. Because you'll need a willpower to drive me out. Drive us out. I need a willpower to shoot anything that's tr- coming after us. I suppose yeah, I'm that poor bastard. Um, yeah, really you know. risky words to say right before botching a roll to drive away. <laughs> Use the willpower. Use it. <laughs> it just like I I wouldn't usually like to interfere, but like, mate, really. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a net of four successes to me. You said oh, he rolled yet? He hasn't rolled yet. Uh, Reginald Foxley Smiles just rolled. That'd be three rolling for you. Oh, fair. that wasn't me. I don't think. Or was it me? No, drive would be seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't have it in my roll list either. That might just be old roll. There you go. There you go. That looks like yeah. a net of four successes to me. Was it? Was it diff seven? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Pedal yeah. to the metal, twenty-five miles an hour. Let's do this. We we actually established that it's probably about forty. Model T came out the year after. Um, and had a, an average cruising speed of about 28 miles an hour. Yeah, what was our car? You're the only one who actually knows, Benji. Yeah, I know, I'm trying to remember what it's called. And Please I'm trying to just put the fucking text cha- uh, text copy I did. in Discord. I, I did. Yeah, you I, put I'd have to scroll up. Called... Hispanio, Hispanio Suiza. I think there's a reason why none of us remember that. Hispanio Suiza. That's Squeeza. What was it? Hispanio Squeeza. 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 Oh, I spelled every single word on there. That's unsurprising. Oh, fuck. 95 miles an hour, apparently. Yeah, but that wouldn't be with five passengers and a boot full of guns. No, no and also, like, was the fast? I'm just going to put it out here, but according to according to my Google search, it's 110 miles an hour. It's the theoretical top speed. But yeah, with, with uh, five passengers, a boot full of more than just guns, and... Uh, on a country road in the dead of night. Forty well, still sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah, let's let's stick with forty going on. Push 45. it to the limit. Yeah. <laughs> Push it to the limit. Drive the car really fast. Then Go away from the yeah. werewolf. Unconfirmed Drive. werewolves. Werewolves. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> My guy. So the five of you. <coughs> bail into the car and then with your butler driving and the sounds of the uh, snarling monsters of the night did any of you light the fire as you left? I, don't think I, so. I suggested it but it never actually happened yeah I don't think anyone did then so you just no. poured out a lot of booze and then just kind of left it uh, did the, sounds uh, did of the, the other bloke run off? Can I, yeah can he I... ran off into the night the, the sounds of the snarling wells grow ever so slightly distant as though they were chasing someone very briefly trying to escape your car kicks into gear. And the automobile... I, sorry? Can I try and make the really cool shot with my rifle of trying to, you know... I know it's not normally how it works, but try and light the fire with a single bullet from my gun as I shoot through the window of the pub. No, Tell you that's what, not that how that works. It's not how it works. If you get five successes, we'll let you do it. Fine, let's do it. So it'll like be dex, firearms. I'm going to charge you a diff nine. Okay, sure. Uh, nine? <laughs> Obviously, if you get a bot, you headshot your Nicholas. 
Okay, that's a risk I'm willing to take. You shoot him in the other arm. <laughs> oh no! Oh, the gentleman the other is arm. dead! Unfortunately not. A uh, simple, uh, simple failure. Simple failure. Well, well, we'll say that you, you, a nearby owl is <laughs> decapitated by your bullet. <clears throat> but alas, no spark. The car begins speeding off south, 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 away from the ruins of the Egbert Arms. It's fine, it wasn't a quest hub or anything. <clears throat> Down towards Tutley without Wold. Sorry, do you not remember the boathouse? <laughs> the boathouse didn't burn. Did it not? Not as I recall. I a thought we'd of... burn that to the ground. No, a lot of... Well, one, you'd burn it into the ocean. And two, the Sea of Ghosts, in fact. And two, a lot of the... A lot of solitude burned, but not the boathouse. No, from Chile. Uh, that wasn't the boat... <laughs> Pretty... Oh, the boathouse! Yeah, that burned. Yeah. Yeah, we did burn that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. No, yeah, well, you definitely burnt that. Yeah, we did. We burnt that. We burnt I just assume that's how things work when I put, like, natural portals to unnatural places in, is you all will inevitably set fire to them on the basis that better safe than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't trust it. To be too much to time eat. after time, campaign after campaign, and Creed, as someone whose whole power revolves around that, I would not laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so... The five of you speed south, south, south. At first, the calls grow distant. Everything recedes into hurried breaths. The cold of the night. The distant cooing of a distressed owl that's just lost its partner. Who? Who? Who did it? Get in the fucking sea, Carl. Jesus Christ. (laughs) <laughs> to wanker's corner he goes <laughs> and then yeah. you hear another much closer howl a familiar howl something is chasing you through the woods the car continues to bustle and buffet as it travels down the long lonely northern road The trees forming an overarching canopy, interweaving over either side of you, so barely that you can, uh, so barely, so thick that you can just barely see the full moon weaving ahead. What do? Thurs, might one of you perhaps take up the elephant gun from where it lies next to me? It's fully reloaded. I'll take it. Ooh. I said a gentleman. Uh Oh ho! My rifle. Oh, I'd love to give it a go. <laughs> my rifle swings round to the back of the head, but turns around, continuing, stopping for just the briefest second. <laughs> Comrade <laughs> Marx would say, <laughs> well, "Just you wait and well, see, when the glorious Mar- communist utopia is founded in Russia." <laughs> but, uh, Comrade oh. Marx says, "Class traitor says what?" <laughs> I'll uh, take up the elephant gun and rest it on the back of the car, I guess. <laughs> the car ducks and weaves and bobs. It's incredibly difficult to get uh, even so much as a, a single shot off from here. Functionally, the pre-aim will lower your difficulty from 9 to 8. Right. Also, like, start I, uh, as well. Can I, can I give him a few pointers on how to shoot <laughs> As an officer. Do you, as an officer, have much experience shooting from the back of a car moving at 40 to 45 miles an hour? Because I feel like World War One was not noted for its armoured car movements. If anything, I oh, would especially with the car, Especially with a gun that kicks this much. <laughs> if anything, okay, I'm fine, fine. the one who's closest to having that experience. This gun uh, kicks I, like a literal mule. Uh, I, I would like to keep an eye out for the beastie, though, so I can curse it when I see it. <laughs> Okay, so three shots readied over the back, and also Sebastian Thornbury is here. <laughs> Quietly just, like, scooching down, giving a a clear shot to uh, uh, Holborn twice. what I was doing without even me having to say it. Mm. I mean, hey, if something swipes over the back seat, you won't get decapitated. Is that, that's really all we can ask for in life, right? 
not getting decapitated. Yes. Well, it depends if you're French right. or not. No. I suppose within France. Mary Antoinette was Austrian. <coughs> so, the howling grows louder and louder, and then silent all of a sudden. There's nothing but the screaming of the motor, heavy breathing, a distant tormented owl, and the jostling of your guns. And then it bursts from the tree line. Okay, from the two of you who had guns pointed in this direction, I will take firearms over decks, please. Difficulty eight. And from the one of you who had a curse ready, name your curse and then fire it for me, whatever your curse roll is at. Um, difficulty eight. What have you actually got in firearms, Creed? Uh... Four. Oh, okay, that's good. I was worrying for a second there. It's going to be like your blooming athletics. Uh, fuck all decks, though. Well, two. Uh, I'll do a um, <laughs> a, a single pip curse uh, in. Oh seven, no! Seven, seven, last time, so physic, uh, physical activities and whatnot. Oh no! 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 Okie dokie. Ooh. Ollie, is that a botch? It's two ones, but I also got an eight and a nine, and I can't remember. If oh, had... it was yeah, it was diff eight. I thought it was yeah, diff it was nine. Diff eight. Do specialities outweigh botches, right? Because you get two, don't you? Yes. Uh, so I've got uh, manipulation uh, status. <laughs> I'm just better than you. Are you rolling status against the werewolves? You're literally powering this on your class privilege. I am sentient, you piece of shit. I'm going to the <laughs> toilet. I'll be right back. <laughs> If you could all scathe young Nicholas for me, I'd appreciate it. Mm. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. An Edwardian gentleman literally refusing to engage with the supernatural bullshit because it didn't go to Eton, therefore it's not right. If I didn't hate it so much, I'd love it. It's all on me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm aware. With two ones, that's still three successes. Maybe. Jeez. <laughs> Which, how long's that curse? Yeah, let's see the curse power of pure class warfare. That shit It punch. is cursed for a day. <laughs> well, hopefully it goes like it did the last time you cursed something for a day. <laughs> oh, sorry, you cursed something for a year. This probably means you'll probably live for a goddamn year. Alright. <laughs> the fucking year long curse, though. <laughs> it lives for a second. You know what, though? Maybe. We've not, that we've not seen Creed's right yet. A lot quicker than you thought it was, right? So if you cursed it for a day, it would have taken like you know three hours to be killed. Oh. You rolled Creed, or you, oh, you rolled, I rolled as me. you. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I was still on you for when you went here. We <laughs> got one success. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. it so <laughs> depends what the curse does. Nine D ten. Uh, it makes uh, uh, physical base test uh, one uh, harder. I mean, presumably you can do other things with your curses. No, it's just increased difficulty on rolls. <laughs> Which okay. well, let's hope it in, in cause terrible things. But well, let's hope it botches. Yeah. So um, from Reginald Foxley Smythe, that's a net one success, right? By the power yeah. of wealth, oh, technology. It's uh, for Creed. Sorry? It was from Cree. Oh, he was yeah, I rolled with him. So I was on him. Fair. Was um, and then. Wait, did you have a gun? Yeah, yeah I, gave Cree the the, I gave Cree the elephant. Oh, yeah, you gave him the elephant rifle, obviously. Sorry, cool. Okay, so not from Reginald Foxley Spies. Because I'm driving. <laughs> uh, yes, entirely fair. Um, so from Woodrow Tango, that's um, net one success. And then from Holborn Twite, that's a simple failure. Uh, and from like, uh, Timothy Pope Jack, it's three successes. Sorry? Yeah. yeah, three successes with curse level one, duration one day. Cool. Uh, what's your What was your curse again? It was a physical curse, right? Physical curse. So anything physical based, it's uh, difficulty one higher. Okay. 
Let me just look something up real quick. I need to check something. What is the class equivalent of werewolf culture? Can a werewolf be cursed for not having gone to Eton? Yes. <laughs> Does the curse down with the pro- proletariat count as a curse? It didn't attend Sydney, Sussex, therefore it's not worth knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to uh, look up something real quick. Well, to be fair, to be fair, there's a select few individuals who did not attend Sydney, Sussex, who are worth knowing, but they're all royalty. Hoban uh, Dwight shot. Was... Sorry, your webcam disappeared. Oh yeah, and yours from mine. Let me reconnect. Hoban Tw- ah, there we go. Hoban Dwight's shot goes thoroughly wild. <coughs> Woodrow Tango's connects, biting deep into the flank of the creature, barely seeming to slow it down. It continues to barrow forwards a leviathan, a juggernaut of muscle and sinew and bone and gnashing teeth. Popenak, clutching at his stump, allowing his mouth to voice ancient and profane words, words of curse, Words debilitating the enemy. Get back in the kennel. Lashes out on a spiritual, magical uh, level. Who here grew up in the countryside? Uh, I didn't. Went for shooting now and then. I presume we're talking the characters, right? Characters, yes. Uh, I'm a London boy. Same. <laughs> Same. <Sorry. Yep. laughs> Wasn't creative when thinking of that. <laughs> I mean, we you? had a summer home out in the uh, countryside, but uh, okay. I don't Does think that counts. Anyone oh. have any dots in Animal Chem? <laughs> no. No, I fed all the animals to London Zoo to get in for free. It's not how that works. But it okay. Did. <laughs> You could pay to get into London Zoo by giving them stray cats and dogs. So. No dots in Animal Ken, and no one grew up in the countryside. There is a fierce and high-pitched whining, a noise as the curse impacts the monster chasing you. And uh, Pope Jack, you've never encountered this before, ever, at all. Not once in your however long history it is of casting curses. But you can all but feel... Your magic slide off the monster's hide. Even though you know you cast the curse correctly, like water off a duck's back, like there's something protecting it, shielding it from your wrath. Like the the curse wasn't strong enough, or it just washed off? I think it went to Eton. First one, then t'other, young Nicholas. I I doubt it, sir. It probably went to Harrow. Low crumbs everywhere. Thanks, Benji. The beast is beginning to catch up with you. You're not too far from the edge of the woods. What do? I would like to take aim at its foot, if possible, and loosen another shot. Really difficult. That's like centre mass is difficult to hit right now. Um, Okay, I'll just. Yeah. Okay, I'll find it. And the the elephant gun hit it in the shoulder and it didn't even slow. You know what, then? I actually am going to... Um, I'm going to aim for its eye instead, and I'm going to spend a willpower on it. I am a top-quality sh- uh, rifleman. I'm going to give it a fucking good try. Better than these posh toffs. I was forged in the fires of war. They were forged in the fires of someone shoving a goat head on their dick whilst they were drunk at some fucking hazing event in Eton. I think, to be fair, almost everyone here would have fought in World War One. I stand by Though also saying. at least some would have been in the Bullingdon Club, which is terrifying. Yeah, what, what? How bad could it possibly go? <laughs> oh, fuck everything. Um, <clears throat> cool. Dex, firearms, diff 10. Sure. Uh, and then I'm also spending a willpower point on this. <laughs> I think I shot with my pistol as well. Uh, yeah, one success. Cool, sure. And the same from yourself, Jan Nicholas. Are you? What are you targeting out with the shooting? Center mass, or are you trying to do a tricksy oh. eye shot? Uh, general center mass, yeah. 
Does a willpower <coughs> count, does a willpower count as spending ten or just an auto success? Auto success. Okay, so my rifles wouldn't count twice then. <coughs> no. Or wouldn't count rather. No, they would not. Mm-hmm. Uh, what were you firing again, sorry? Uh, if you wanted to, you're allowed to. Was the difficulty again? Was it 7 or 6? It was diff 10. Diff 10? Fuck me, okay. Yeah, sorry, it was diff, uh, diff 7 if you're shooting... Uh, di- sorry, diff 7. Diff 8 if you're shooting the center mass, diff 10 if you're shooting for the eye. Ah, I see. I still, I still miss, just... Uh, I'll go for the eye, bravely and boldly, without a willpower. Watch, watch, watch. Oh, it's a shame, actually. No watch. Shot after shot pings at the beast. Maybe you Sir, hit it in the you face. Sir, you will need to reload. If you um, would like me to, I can. Probably. I, I did get oh, that sounds wonderful. I'll hand you the other <laughs> Maybe you hit it in the face. Maybe you hit it in the eye. Maybe you hit it in the shoulder or the body. Honestly, it's just a blur of death chasing after you. And if it was hit, it did not show it. Ewan, uh, what would you like me to roll for reloading the elephant gun whilst I drive? I do not think it is feasibly practical to do so. If anything, I would ask you to roll a drive roll to not crash the car at 45 miles an hour. This must be the fastest anyone's ever gone. Like, at this point, I was about to like volunteer to reload because I'm just kind of sat here, but now I'm going to like shrink down further into like a fetal position to brace for impact. Um, our box of weaponry isn't accessible from here, is it? Nope, it's in the boot. Well, I suppose you could climb, open the boot, and then climb down into it, but that would be a difficult roll, and if you fall off, you're not going to do well. If nothing oh. else, yeah, you will roll to back well. towards the beast. The beast which just at the very least got shot in the eye and didn't so much as slow down. Uh, and, uh, Ollie, if it pleases your munchkin's heart, know that I didn't try to stop you, but that's absolutely me not fucking with the raw whatsoever. No, that's fine. I know. I know so it is. I know. Very I know. forlorn hope. I know. I know. Uh, I should serve a pistol on me if you just wanted a pistol, Nick. What are you after? <laughs> It's no, I, I, I know with... that Benji has a lot of points in armory, so I was hoping for maybe a grenade. Oh. It's been shot with the elephant gun. Yes. Everything you have seen about shooting this one has indicated that it does not give two shits about your petty mortal weapons. Does it seem a bit bigger than the other one? You know, I, I've got a photo. We it need seems... One more indistinct. It moves faster. It blurs harder. It triggers a significantly more feral instinct within you. An all-consuming, ice-cold fear, bathing your marrow in primordial dread. Hmm. Okay. Could I roll a general occult knowledge check on it, just to really hammer home? Diff 10, sure. <laughs> occult <laughs> intelligence. Uh... <laughs> That's a botch. That's just a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look that different from the other one, and that other one was just a dog. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly, you just need to shoot it in the back of the neck. That worked last time. Difficult from this angle, but maybe that's their weakness. Or it could be your complete lack of silver. <laughs> You are just shooting it with regular bullets, something that you have all been repeatedly calling a werewolf. <laughs> Was out of character. I mean, at this point, like it may as well be in character, let's be honest. You did see the other one transform into a dog. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, can I mean, then it's technically not really a were. Can I roll a cult to see if I can come up with any idea? I would suggest you brainstorm as players what you want to do here. Uh, Carl, can you use fire? (laughs) Fire time, Mr. Fire? Fire costs a willpower. (laughs) So does dodging death, sir. All I can do is open doors and shoot. (laughs) I could try cursing at a higher level. Curse at a higher level, roll a double. What what can your curses do besides general physical things? It's so. Uh, can you it, make him trip? You can make. You I, can I wish. 
it <laughs> made the werewolf feel real bad about the class it was born into. Uh, what is it? Uh, flicked. Uh, you just choose the level you want, and the levels are... It adds, basically, per level, it adds that level of difficulty to the rolls for that said curse and what that curse affects. And you kind of say, what do you want the curse to be? And I mean, you know, like, physical and, and this sort of thing. So, um, it can be fairly broad. Um, but the actual specific effects, <laughs> it's just kind of, these bad things could happen because of the curse. It's like at the second level... The victim suffers from uh, a string of errors and bad luck that results in lasting injury or embarrassment, such as a step on a nail, uh, breaking an heirloom, uh, or catching a minor disease. I, I will step in here and clarify that, to be fair, when you felt that curse slide off of the monster, you felt what was, for lack of uh, a better word, an aegis around it. It has some form of supernatural protection that was accompanied by a, a high-pitched screaming sound from the ether. Yeah, my fire's probably going to do jack shit then. Might do better than a curse. I mean, of course, in character, I don't know this. Like... <coughs> Did I try well, to is do... it gaining on us? It oh, is help. slowly gaining on you. Um, <laughs> going off the what happened to what I felt. Can I... Um... Surmise if this is a permanent thing, if we could wear it down. It doesn't really matter if it's permanent or if you could wear it down. It's going to reach you before you get a chance to do any of that. I see. Like, what's the distance we're currently looking at? Call it 20 metres. Oh, okay. I have my toolkit on me when we ran into the car, right? So presumably that's just been awkwardly balanced on our laps and in the footwell. Yeah, so, I was carrying it. I think so. I'll try to do the ends. But either way, it should be here, right? Uh, how steadily is this thing moving? You know, is it going side to side a lot or keeping a consistent path? Relatively consistent. There's an amount of uh, chaotic meddling from side to side. All right, I will try and get my camera out and rest it on the back so you take a picture. <laughs> it's you. You are an experienced <laughs> enough photographer to know that photography in this day and age is not advanced <laughs> enough for that. You are going to end up with a like blurry ass nonsense shots. <laughs> I mean, um, flash help at all to like uh, say blind it temporarily? Maybe. And. Um, Again, I think the best chance is the fire. Break out the fire. Either way, I'm going to try and take a picture of it. Yeah, um, the upon, flash up. <laughs> like upon seeing this, I'm going to prep a uh, bonfire size inferno to explode, like you know, on its chest. All right, that'll like, be a diff eight. A diff eight for whatever your casting role is there, Sebastian Thornbury, and let's have a look at Woodrow Tango and see what photography should be in this context. I guess we can take firearms for photography. Why the fuck not? It's probably basically the same skill set. Am I right? Um, <laughs> I study photography. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Firearms perception diff eight for Woodrow Tango, please. Oh, <laughs> Woodrow Tango putting his gun down and resolving that hey, he may have cracked the lens on his camera, but at least he can maybe get some kind of a shot, and whoever finds his camera after he's killed will <laughs> presumably have some evidence. That'll be pretty cool. Do you have a specialty? Uh, no. Well, in Does that case... count as being curious and or aloof? <laughs> <laughs> I will allow curiosity, <laughs> given the circumstances. Thank you. On five successes, you get off one hell of a shot. It's going to be blurry and completely unusable, but holy shit does the flash get right in the thing's eyes. Following up on one success, what does your fire do, Sebastian Thornbury? Uh, well, it's bonfire-sized damage. Uh, I believe it was a diff 7 to soak 2 aggravated health damage. 
It definitely does ag, right? Yeah. Yeah, let me check again. <laughs> Creaky door. Uh, yeah, two ag per turn. <laughs> two ag per turn. Okay, that does change things quite drastically. The flash goes off, and a second redder glow shortly afterwards as a ball of flame is launched directly at the oncoming monstrosity. I look at my flash lens a bit curiously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know what the fuck happened. Uh, that That's a lot more intense than it's supposed to be, but maybe something got weirdly mushed together in the fall. Uh, if nothing else, the image is going to be both cripplingly blurry and horrifyingly overly exposed. It'll look like a big white plane with a grey smudge in the middle. But even in real life, the monster looks like nothing so much as a grey smudge as it falls back whirling and screaming and crying out to the moon and the stars above. All gnashing teeth and an orange glow as it catches a light. The beast cries and howls. But you gain enough distance that you're able to motor on towards Tutley without Wold. You can see the bridge the bridge ahead of you crossing a local stream with thick dark fast flowing water it's something of a hump i will take dex adge diff dex adge sorry dex drive uh diff diff seven please benji see how well you take that bridge that would be three successes. <laughs> three successes. You slam on the brakes. You feather the brakes just in time to bring your momentum down low enough ah. that you're able to cross the old hump-style bridge relatively gracefully without discomforting the gentleman in the ah. back. <laughs> and sadly, without discomforting the tradesman in the front. The howling behind you recedes as you cross into Tutley without Wald itself. Folks, you've outrun the monster. Your car comes down to a gentle putter, and the craggy, rocky buildings of uh, Tutley Without Walls stretch around you. A dozen streets in either direction. Scarcely a town, more of a large village or overdeveloped hamlet. And yet, the major focus of civilization in the area. Most houses seem dark, but this is not atypical for uh, the time and period. What do? We uh, come to a halt, then. Yes. Well, if you'd like to. (laughs) You kind of slowed to an almost incongruous, like, quiet crawl through the village so as not to wake anyone up. But you can bring the car to a halt. Should we look for, like, a (laughs) and b (laughs) That's the thing. Yeah, they've got a hotel. A hotel. First thing's good. first. Reload. Yes, I put the, the one bullet I'm missing back into my gun. <laughs> huh. Uh, so it looks like it's not a huge thing at the moment. At least in the UK, it doesn't seem like it starts to go until the 1940s. Uh, it's it's a weird consequence of the war, essentially. So you'll have to find a pub, oh, a okay. less destroyed pub to lodge in now. <laughs> destroyed when we arrived? It was not destroyed when you arrived. It was destroyed by something else quite quickly after we arrived. Mm. <laughs> we were not the cause of the effect. We were involved. After a brief... To defend it. After a brief putter... You run across a much smaller, much uh, homelier-looking little establishment. The Tutley Inn. The uh, sign is missing the U, so it just looks like the Tutley Inn. You take my Percy Yorkshire. I don't know what you mean. How defendable does it look? <laughs> Not at all defendable. The whole village looks like a nightmare for that. 
If something were to assault you here, your professional opinion as a military man is that it will be a bloodbath. This is the type of place where both you and the Germans would have walked artillery over it in the war. <laughs> Thank Christ no explosions to that scale will ever take place on British soil. The inn is open, though it looks quite muted inside. What are we doing, gents? I'll be worse than the last place, can it? <laughs> Famous last I words. Look ruefully over at Tango and don't say anything, but just raise my eyebrow. I'm just smiling dumbly. <laughs> I, I just I chuckle and like tap you on the shoulders, like that's the spirit. <laughs> That's the style. Bags of fashion. Um, I would then like to pull the uh, bottle of whiskey from within my coat pocket. So I like, know this is the spirit. Uh, <laughs> just have a swig. <laughs> Out of the bottle. Reginald, you feel a twinge of discomfort at watching this most ungentlemanly behaviour. <laughs> Without a glass. Dear Lord. Needs well. be... There's I'm afraid no my way. next my next roll is going to be a minus three. <laughs> <laughs> May as well wear a red and blue striped tie to the races. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Like, don't go <laughs> overboard now. Is it a plus three difficulty or a minus three pool mod? Sorry, it's plus three difficulty. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> wanted to check because the pool mod would be quite extreme. <laughs> Wait, is it whenever this was in slightly near you as well? I thought it was just when you were in slightly. I, I will say no, one it, of my favourite when... Jeeves and Worcester sketches is like someone wears a novelty tie and Jeeves has to sit down in the kitchen and stop speaking for like four minutes because he's overcome by a deep and intense depression immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, young Nicholas, it's Every uh, anytime anyone is not behaving like a gentleman, who is a gentleman? So Ollie can behave how he likes, but uh, but the gentlemen have to keep the parents. You have to keep maintain standards. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, unfortunately, at this moment, standards are out of. I mean, we don't have a window. Uh, so, as you swig, the butler mournfully unloads the gear from the boot of the car. I'm going to make sure I unload my. I'm gone. I'm going to make sure I unload my own gear. I ain't trusting the butler with any shit now. Yeah, he, he seems almost sluggish this time. It's actually not that difficult to outpace him and like quietly and carefully unload your own stuff without issue. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can check us in. I'll follow in. The publican inside looks surly, surprised to see you. Welcome to the Egbert Arms, my lords. Can I... He seems so drained. Help you? Yes, uh, we'd Egg like... Uh, sorry, uh, Egbert Arms, the, the Tutley Inn. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait just one moment. Uh, uh, hmm. Yes, three rooms. Three room, five rooms. <laughs> we need five rooms, please. I've only got three, I'm afraid. How many beds? Hmm. Uh, four, two doubles, and uh, one room with two singles. If it Any? doesn't, it, it doesn't matter, sir. I'll, uh, if I'm allowed, I'll, I'll sleep down here in the bar. The, the the bar as you sort of bustle in with the luggage, the barkeep just kind of not chuckles, but there's a dry rasping cough that may once have resembled a chuckle. Do any of the rooms have sofas? Cities? No, not especially. But I don't think you'll have issues. All right. Well, I'll take one of the doubles. All right. Same. I'll go take another one of the doubles then. That they've run out of doubles. No, then I'll take a single. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Ollie, but I can count. Um, I would like to turn around, <laughs> raise an eyebrow, and then look at uh, Reginald and kind of no notion like towards him, like, 
<laughs> yes, Mr. Thwite, I rather think that Sir Sebastian will be having the room as opposed to you. You can stay with me. Damn Tory <laughs> so bastards. You can have the room with two singles. <laughs> <laughs> You can push that them be together. Nice. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going up to my single and no one can stop me. <laughs> Middle finger up, walking backwards up the stairs. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is one of those awkward moments where like, I really want to roleplay my character versus like not making things awkward. Let's check in with Ollie, as I think he's probably most affected. Ollie, how, how much do you mind the noblesse being spiteful about this? I mean, the the more spiteful they are, the better. Fair. It's not quite so much spite as part of being a pyrokinesis is I'm, like, as fiery as my powers. I see. I see. It's an earthbender situation. <laughs> I don't know why I went but Earthbender cool. when Firebender cool. was right there. But yeah. <laughs> There's still another single in there, so you can take the other single. The I... idea that Sir Sebastian will be sleeping alongside a member of the working class is... The idea, my dear boy, he says in his best posh fake drool, that I'll be sleeping the downstairs amongst the class traitor is laughable as well. Mr. Twite, I think you'll find you're some years younger than me. There he goes, so reinforcing enough. outdated ageist ideas about one per uh, group owing fealty to another merely due to seniority? You are a human and a worker, every bit as valid as himself. In any case, Mr. Twite, um, do you have coin readily available to pay for this room? I do. Uh, how much coin? <laughs> The barkeep shakes his head and just wanders away from the bar. Uh, I, Carl, if you want to roleplay being fiery, that, that's fine by me. The thing is, you've only got resources one, whereas I've got resources two. <laughs> but I still have resources one. I know, but I can pay the guy more to have the room. <laughs> but I'm already going to do it. <clears throat> then we'll perk you out. You're fine. Then in the race to get the room, it's not the coin, but the person who's in it first. Oh, you'll find the rest of the group, goes. it's the man who's heavily armed with every kind of weapon imaginable. <laughs> well, I'm going to get a drink. <laughs> I'll wander off. <laughs> Aye, we shall let them squabble. I'll go get a drink as well. <laughs> I turn towards the butler. You and your pathetic class traitor type. I think you're, you're, you're just from upstairs, Ollie. You're just kind of yelling at him from up the stairs. Yeah, I'm no absolutely yelling at him from upstairs. Yeah, we're kind of just up. seething in rage right now. Yes, this 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 is not done, sir. This will have to be rectified. Yeah, I, shall have him, I shall turf him out forthwith. You hear a muffled shout, like, fuck, it's not done this way from upstairs. <laughs> yeah, eye twitching. Like, visible eye twitching. I shall, get, I shall have him moved forthwith, sir. <laughs> you hear a door slam, and a heavy, heavy trunk placed in front of it. <laughs> Well, that's just not cricket. <laughs> All right, I guess that's probably an opposed yeah. strength athletics from the butler the idea versus the, the... That this man served in the Great War and behaves like this. Because of the Great War, I behave like this. <laughs> we'll call it a diff eight from the both of you, shall we? I'm assuming this is consensual PvP. Yes, right. that's going to be fine by me. Um, what was strength it? athletics, you say? Strength athletics diff eight for the both of you. Ooh. Simple failure uh, from simple the butler. Failure. You know, I'm. <laughs> I'm gonna. Not, sp not. I want to spend Don't willpower. spend a willpower. No, you come coward. on. Uh, Fight him I'm honestly. Fine. It's simple a simple double simple failures. There's a lot of embarrassing scuffling and what hoes from up above as the two engage in a truly upsettingly pathetic tug of war over trying to get the door open versus like shoving back against it. <laughs> Isn't really? Ollie's a botch? No. no. You've got a one. No, uh, oh. Reginald's would be the botch oh, no, no, of the no, two no, and, right, and he's still got an eight so uh, yeah, Reginald is fine eight, yeah. and it's just a simple so it's just a simple failure for both of them. <laughs> Seeing as I was already in there first though I'm gonna... <laughs> You can't sleep like this, but you can carry on like this for some time. 
So I guess we'll check in as the scuffle stretches on into its 10th and 11th minute. What are we doing down here? Uh, uh, I'm going to have a couple of drinks. If the barkeep doesn't come back, I shall just help myself to a glass and yeah. leave some change on the counter. Exactly. It just doesn't seem to come back. But, you know, you've got a few bob in your wallet. You can... Uh... Do they have wallets? Presumably. You'd assume so, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like I've yeah. seen them in Jeeves and Worcester. And Jeeves and Worcester is, is really like 80% of my guideline for this time period. As it should be, to be fair. Oh, yeah, we have the giant fucking banknotes as well. We oh my god, I forgot about the giant banknotes! Oh, I still miss linen banknotes. I hate the plastic ones. True that. Uh, how, uh, does he, so does he only have three rooms, or does he just own, does he only, only have three, three rooms total? Okay. I'm going to redouble my efforts to try and get in this point. You're going to be there for a while on that draw. <laughs> because yeah, uh, downstairs, the barkeep's just disappeared. Yeah, I'll just have a couple of drinks, then retire to my room and lock the door if possible. <laughs> you pour yourself a couple and then head upstairs, noting that it's very important that you get in there before Sebastian Thornbury realises he might be able to commandeer your room. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's no, a, that's not going to happen. He's also a gentleman. This is, why I'm not stealing young, this is why I'm not stealing young Nicholas's room or going for uh, Freed's room. What are the other two downstairs doing? I, I, I'm going to follow suit, to be fair. And, uh, <laughs> after, after, after a drink or so, I'm going to go upstairs and retire for the evening. You make very polite but awkward conversation with an obviously incensed Sebastian Thornbury. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian, like, you're not, you're I'm not, not even giving full sentence responses. At best, it's a grunt. <laughs> you know, alone downstairs in the bar. I will point <laughs> this out as well, you, young uh, Ollie. Is you're part of a secret society, and you're openly just ignoring requests at slash orders to let the more senior members of the society have the room. I. Uh, this sure. isn't even a class thing. No, it's a class thing now, motherfucker. <laughs> he was, if I recall his he- uh, his backstory, to be fair, headhunted by the secret society. It's the case. So I'm not saying you're not right that this is going to cause him some issues, but it is also clear that they want him. A master mechanic with almost magical hands and an affinity for enchantments. Sebastian Thorbury, it's been about an hour. The scuffle is still ongoing. What do? Carl? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Seething and rage. Eye twitching, calm silence. Sorry, eye twitching, uncalm silence. Uh, at this point, a few veins have popped out in the forehead. All right. Okay, we'll have a we'll have a rematch for the upstairs lot. Then we're going to lower it to diff seven to increase chances of a definite result. Oh, don't worry. Like uh, I'm not saying like this has to go my way, sort of thing. No, that's entirely uh, one fair. Th- one two, two. Sorry, for, sorry about the first one. I yeah, rolled a sixty nineteen. Oh yeah, sorry, not Ollie. Yeah, I was going to say, Benji, you cannot roll d nineteen. <laughs> not valid. I do not recognize a result a result of nineteen on a d ten. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm min maxed. I win. Uh, you think I'm gonna give no. up? <laughs> oh yeah, you do win. Yeah, no, you, you've you've been up there for an hour when eventually you hear a loud crash from inside. Meanwhile, on the other side of the door, uh, Holman Twight has strategically and over the course of an hour with his foot managed to bring a bookcase near to uh, like uh, nearby, like dragged it over. Centimeter by centimeter. Sorry, it's the imperial system, right? What's smaller than an inch? An inch. Sorry, they usually use fractions at that point. All right, so dragged it over quarter inch by quarter inch with his foot <laughs> over the course of an hour, fueled by nothing but spite and class rage, and then in one quick motion pulled it over in front of the door. Used that to get him enough leverage that he can finally get the fucking lock down. And short of breaking down the door, the room is locked. My, I'm going to put my very heavy case in front of the bookcase as well. Is there anything uh, similar I could do to this side of the door to seal him in? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 
With enough effort, sure, I'm sure you can find furniture. It's been a lot of smashing from up here, and the publican's not interfered at all. <laughs> I think we're going to get on open. well in this town. <laughs> Does the door open inwards or outwards? Because it's going to make a very big difference. I think it opens inwards. Okay, so I just have to open the door, see the furniture, and move it then. Well, it depends what furniture he lugs in front of you, to be fair. If he can get something heavy enough. To be fair, I also have my very large mechanics toolbox. I can probably... I probably have a saw or something. True. (laughs) You are cripplingly aware of this, unfortunately, Reginald Foxley spied. (laughs) Damn working class scum. You just come upstairs in the morning to find a neatly disassembled bookcase on the outside. Mm. Uh, so, I will take it. I will take strength athletics if you want to roll for that, please, Benji. That'll be we'll call it a diff seven to account for difficulty of finding the stuff. That's a single success. God damn! I cannot roll today. You can't. I blame Carl. He keeps taking <laughs> all the luck. Sorry. Damn you, Carl. Yeah, Damn. you find a bookcase, but it looks a bit rickety, and you know he's got a toolbox in there. There's a decent chance that even with your best efforts to brace it, he's just going to be able to, like, bust his way out, give it about 20 minutes. I mean, also the door opens inwards. Yeah. Well, no, it doesn't mean he can't brace it outside, though. If there's, if there's a fire, he'd probably die. But otherwise... <laughs> Don't give Carl ideas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't lie, part of me is, like... Yeah... <laughs> All right, I'm not opposed to you doing it, but fair warning, I'm not giving you another pub. If you burn this one down, you've had two, you're done. Yeah, that's part of why I'm kind of just not doing anything. <laughs> There's got to be at least one more pub. I I shout through the door as I hear, presumably the scuffling of a large object in it, go sleep with your master, dog. <laughs> I'll get the elephant gun. Don't think I won't. You'll need two to carry it. You should hear the news coming out of Russia. <laughs> it's really weird at this time period. Everyone's like, oh, didn't they just they had a revolution, right? Ah, fucking democratics. Who cares, Who cares about the Russians? <coughs> Never amount to anything. Backwards nation. Do you think your master's going to want to fire the gun as you hold it? Hansy. I'm just going to draw my Webley and start firing through the door, deliberately missing into the ceiling. I am going to sleep soundly. I am going to take no chance. <laughs> I'm sad to say that in this generation where most of the, the, the men folk would have gone through the First World War, it's pretty fair to say he can sleep under sound of gunfire. <laughs> like, if anything, hearing the gunshots just makes me feel more and more yeah. right. With Not that that's healthy, but... This is what we like to call toxic communism. That's not... That's not how that works. That's not how any of this works. Of all the examples... I know. I wanted to say it. (laughs) Alright, people who are forced to sleep outside, butler and lord alike, what's your plan for the evening? Because the sleeping segment has now worn on. Yeah, I'm probably not sleeping. Um, I presume that there's a fire in the common area. Sure. Does yeah. he have anything left in the car? Has he taken all of his gear? Yes, he only had one trunk. Curses. I'm um, just going to spend the whole night stoking the fire, isn't I? <laughs> <laughs> staring at it. Staring into it. The fire never lies. Fire <laughs> can solve all your problems. Burn them. Burn them all. It's like you're in my head. <laughs> like he's watched a terrible TV series. <laughs> Not what that TV series said at all. But it did at the end. So, I suppose let's just double the uh, double check in then. Uh, Butler, what are you doing? Uh, I am going to go to the publican and pay him lots of money to not serve Ollie any food ever. He just kind of disappeared out back somewhere and just never came back, even after actual gunshots were fired. <laughs> Probably why he never came and back. we found either. the other house with vampires in it. What do you mean, other house with vampires? Since last campaign. Did I miss a session? <laughs> oh, last campaign. I don't yes. know what you mean. Hmm. <laughs> Doubt. <laughs> 
Well, we were briefed on the town, right? They said everyone yeah. had gotten something or other. Lethargic or um, something? And unfortunately, casualties are to be kept to minimum, so I can't just kill someone and take their house. <laughs> well, that would also be very illegal. <laughs> Stop on someone's door and ask them if you could stay the night. Very true. <laughs> Are you evicting it, yourself from the common room because you can't sit in the same room as the noblesse? As the it's brood. like, I can, I just can't sleep in the same room. Just go sleep in the car, you coward. <laughs> I was going to. I don't think Carl will. No, Carl said he's not sleeping. We're just sorting out you. So what are we doing, Benji? Uh, yeah, I'll go sleep in the car. Okay. The night passes fitfully for all of you. The one who's awake, the ones who are asleep. Well, do we get bashing back from sleep? Uh, I don't know how it works. I think it needs to be like several days. No, a full eight hours of uninterrupted thing. Yeah, fuck it. You can heal a bashing from that. Why not? Okay. I think that's the void. It's a little slower than that, but screw it. <clears throat> Your dreams bleed into one another. You feel you can hear ancient screams. The ring of steel on steel. Even the one of you who's awake as he stares, stares, stares into the fire, hour after hour. Screams in a foreign language. Multiple foreign languages. Do any of you have any dots in academics? Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I have one. too. Those of you who have at least a single dot in academics, recognize at least some of the foreign language as a rather ancient form of Latin. Cries and shouts of fear and terror, less religious than martial in tone. Blood and iron. Suffering and fear. The night wiles away, and beneath it all, a distant, nagging sense, a desire to go somewhere extremely specific and do something... something? Something. Something undescribed. And yet the need persists, even as you open your eyes in the morning. Even as one of you blinks into daylight, aware that they've been doing nothing but hunched over, banking the fire hour after hour. That indeterminate need to take action, and yet a complete uncertainty as to what that action is, hovering at the very edge of your consciousness. Burn the ball! <laughs> this has not been a restful night's sleep. You do not regenerate willpower. No. Sweet yes, I'm not the only one! Sorry. You are not indeed the only one. In fact, mm. all of you who slept, if you didn't know any better, you you feel like you haven't slept a wink, like you got nothing out of staying asleep or just stopping being awake for even the briefest time. You you know you did, if nothing else. Sebastian Thornbury looks at much worse for wear. But... You don't feel rested at all. Even in the morning, the publican is nowhere to be seen. Mm. And this somewhere specific, how specific was that? Did it be like see a place? Is it somewhere we recognize? Or? You saw northern moors, rolling hills. You could hear the pounding of feet in the distance. Dozens, no, hundreds of people marching, charging, running, all in sequence. Together and yet mismatched, it felt like somewhere extremely specific, an actual place, a thing, somewhere you could go. But you still couldn't place it, not unless you felt yourself standing in the exact spot you were in your dream. If only we had a dream, mage. If only. Um, but yeah, um... Uh, I presume that everyone else was at the briefing at the same time. Uh, I was. Yes, um, you were all at the briefing at the same time. Cool. Um, so, uh, when the... like, I say the others have woken up, but has anyone come down yet? 
Yeah, we'll see uh, everyone apart from presumably Holman Twight has come down, and we'll let Holman control his own speed of when he wishes to descend. So I say everyone. The other two and the butlers come in from the car. Yeah, I would come down looking for breakfast. Yeah, Holman Twight wakes up. You know, he doesn't feel as refreshed as he had hoped, but the power of having done one up on the uh, on the no on on the, on the noble the noble lot and their their, their dog has made him feel a certain sense of spiritual restedness. Uh, you know, he goes to open the door, sees the bookcase in front of it, takes out his number four screwdriver and slowly and carefully dismantles it with a large smile on his face. Yeah, the struggle. Given he's got to take, is. given he's given he's got to take time to dis- dismantle that. Can I have gone into the kitchen, taken the food for everyone else, and systematically destroyed all other food? <laughs> Wait, no, we might need food in the future, Benji. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this is a small Let's, place. <laughs> you should make some Let's sandwiches. Make sandwiches. Yes. Yeah, yeah, make some sandwiches. Make some sandwiches. Fuck's sake. Right, so I, won't, okay. I, won't sandwiches. Destroy, I won't destroy the food, I'll just steal the food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make it all into sandwiches and pack them up. <laughs> right, you're just going to wind up putting it in the boot, which is currently filled with guns. He's going to find it. I'll just keep it on me, it's fine. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to point out any more structural flaws. I'm done. Um, I will take. Do you have a craft roll? What's your? I have craft mechanic. I no, have survival. Reginald. I have survival. Are you, you making us breakfast as well? What is your prof? Like, what is your professional role, Benji? What do you see it as? Because uh, I feel like, especially for making breakfast, craft. Seems Academic, relevant. If he's trained as a butler, etiquette. If he's trained as a butler, traditionally speech, but we'll allow it for simple yeah, stuff. You're not a chef with etiquette, but you can probably do a decent breakfast. Yeah, that's the idea. Four dots in a cult and none in craft. World's worst butler. <laughs> a specific type of butler. There's a there's a reason. Yeah, but you know, you didn't take a specific type of craft either. <laughs> I'm a spooky butler. You can't oh, say, it's not my fault, I'm a shit generalist. I'm supposed to be a specialist, whilst also being a shit specialist. Uh, I will take... We'll call it... Dex Etiquette Diff 8, please. To do this with speed. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> That's a botch. I literally can't roll anything better. You are make- halfway mean, through yeah. speedily making these sandwiches when you turn, whirl, to see a flash of cloth at the doorway and something missing. Two of your precious sandwiches snatched up the very second your back was turned by what you could only assume to be the ultimate in dastardly cunning Holman Twite, sandwich thief. <laughs> <laughs> sandwich the extraordinaire all right mate you've stolen two sandwiches let's start Stro- small you can work your way up to extraordinaire <laughs> rank <laughs> uh, and no, you didn't I, even get these on skill you got this on benji botched because carl steals all the luck I, I like to think that as i exit the kitchen you know with my two soul stolen sandwiches <laughs> of rotating my arms as i come in so i'm just like oh what else have a Really nice sleep last night. Takes another big bite of a sandwich. You look at four haggard, four sorry, three haggard sets of eyes in front of you. Everyone you looks said like you didn't shit. get a good night of sleep. No, he's lying. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm was quite awful actually. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Some sort of nightmare, marching, clanging of iron, screams in Latin. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, have we just been sat here in silence this whole time? I think you've been like making awkward morning small talk about the weather and avoiding the awkward dream that you all know you have to talk about. That's interesting. I had the same dream. Oh, well. I do think our uh, briefing said something about nightmares in the area. Yeah, it seems they're all connected, though. That's quite interesting. Indeed. <laughs> Just we start at White Mountain. Oh? It was more hills than mountain, I think, wasn't it? So surely, uh, states, uh, and well, this is Yorkshire. Well. Of course, they're going to make it sound grand. What else have they got around here? Nah, it's very true. It's very true. It's, uh, 
Probably just a few rabbit hills. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, all all goodwill you had, Holborn Twite, just seems to drain out of you. Like, my God, these are toffee-nosed bastards. What I mean, I what I I make a suggestion? I, Why would I, we not investigate the people currently living in the town to see if they, too, share these dreams, and if there's any more information to be gathered as to the exact location described within... Holborn is privately thinking he could have broken bread with them, but now he just wants to break their iron grip on the working class. Yes, class struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Victory for the proletariat is surely on the way. Bolshevik scum. This will be the century of workers' rights. He Actually, knows it like, in his bones. Yeah, like. Straight up, if he's out and out a Bolshevik, we would probably all want to kill him. I don't think he's we, out the, the and civil out war. Bolshevik. The civil war is going on quite bad. Quite, you know, he's made I, he's made one comment using the word class traitor, which is probably very sus. But there are a lot of tensions inflamed earlier. You just got to remember that you know I was sent to uh, sent into many battlefields by much richer people than I am, who weren't anywhere around to be seen. I'm very, very annoyed at this. Katachan okay, commissars the situation I feel you're in right now, Ollie. They're not going to openly murder you, but, like, maybe don't let them have guns at your back. Well, give us half a chance. Um, but, yeah, sorry, uh, I would just like to remind everyone that there was, uh, I say, rumours and folklore of um, a Roman burial mound on White Mountain. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I'm glad you're taking notes. <laughs> I have notes, but I didn't look them up. Uh, cool. Well, White Mountains sounds like a good idea then. Well, naturally, we could talk to the uh, local populace on the way. Uh, I'm sure we should encounter some fellows on the journey. <laughs> yes. I am curious as to where our barkeeper's gone, though. He's just wandered off, hasn't he? It is rather uncouth to leave one's establishment unattended with guests present. Yes, especially after such a god-awful sleep. You'd think the beds would at least be a little bit better with as much as many these many awful uh, nightmares going around. Certainly. Uh, Woodrow Tango, you notice something atop the bar. Oh? It's your change. Left exactly where you left it. Just a little oh. ways away from that... Timothy Popajack's change left where he left it. Hmm. Well, I actually have quite a lot of self-control and conscience, so I'm just going to pack it into the till. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> In the background, Reginald Foxley Smythe, suppressing all facial movement, but feeling a deep groundswell of pride at the nobility, acting like the nobility. They Dude. call it the upper class for a reason. By the nobility acting like a common, decent person. I, I look, <laughs> common? You saw him leave. Decent? Sorry. Uh, you saw him go out back and they just never came back. Maybe we should go check on the lad. Let's go, maybe we run Holman, back. Holman privately realises he never actually paid for a room. <laughs> He's fine with that. As, uh, as... Timothy Popajack stands up and starts to poke through the back of the bar and then out into the, the residential uh, section of the building. There doesn't seem to be anything or anyone here, but you do see an open door through which you can trace a draft coming, leading out onto the ro- a rear street. I open the door. The door was already open. And as you Quiet. peek through it, you can see in the far distance a figure traipsing out onto the moors. Barely a speck on the horizon. Yet you fancy you can just about make out arms and legs moving. Moving away from you. Walking far, far away from Tutley without Wald. Hey, gents, what do you make of this? Mm. Do our rifles have scopes of any particular powerfulness? I do not believe so. No. Fair enough. I'd like to like, um, point out the, the blip on the horizon. Can I make a perception check to see if he looks like our uh, our landlord from last night? 
That's going to be a pretty hard perception. I'll do uh, perception alertness, diff 9. Oh, yeah, I have no alertness. Can I do it over investigation? That's not investigation. I'm sorry, Ollie. You'd recognize him if you that? saw him. It's just a straight, can you make out the figure? i try. I'd like to have a squint. I a, yeah, I mean, I have a squint, but I don't think I'm going to make it. I'd give it a if it's open. Was it alertness over... Perception. Yeah. Just pull head yeah, simply from Morbin Twite as he sort of like squints Woodrow Tango next to him. You're pretty sure that that's the, the, the landlord. And then Timothy Popajack bringing up the rear on two successes rather than one. That's <laughs> definitely the landlord. See, you can make out his like uh, slightly odd haircut even from this distance, which he totally had mentioned in the initial description that he didn't have. And heck, yeah. that's, that's definitely a land landlord. No, I don't think it looks a bit like him. Hmm. I think he's gone off to wherever that place in the dream was. Shall we Shall we bring our things back down to the car and follow him potentially in the car? <laughs> or should someone set off after, off after him on foot? The car is not I, particularly well equipped for travel across the rolling Yorkshire moors. It wouldn't it, it, immediately break down, but if it runs into trouble, it's going to get fucked pretty quickly. It's less so for travelling across the moors. It's more that you know, when the person who owns the building is walking away from it, I kind of feel like it might explode at some point. I feel it's like moving out of the way of danger, essentially. Is there, like, at least a bit of the road going in that direction, and then we can, like, drop the car off somewhere else? Nope, not at all. Jeez. Are <laughs> we heading fine. towards White Mountain, perchance? <coughs> Difficult to tell from here. White Mountain, uh, despite what the map might make it seem like from the pointiness, is uh, far more sloping in real life. He's heading out onto the moors, and perhaps vaguely towards that quarter, that direction somewhat, but he could be overshooting it. Or heading a bit off to the side, either side, in fact. I mean, he could be going to Cat Clock Point. Vital part of the narrative is Cat Clock Point. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I do. Uh, Ollie, you, you're your Holborn, aren't you? Yes. Uh, Mr. Twite, do, do you think you could possibly make some modifications to the car and make it off-road worthy? Um, I take out the rag that I have in my pocket at all times, and I start sort of like, I go, well... I could loosen some things up, tighten some things up elsewhere. The problem is it's not, it's not designed for it, so I, I, I fear there may not be very much I could do, but I could always give it a go, I suppose. He'd, uh, he'd essentially have a decent shot at proofing it and repairing it, but it's definitely not foolproof. More or less what Ollie said. <laughs> might work, might get knackered. I have the tools, and I have probably enough spare material, but it might just be a little difficult. Basically, say, if, you, if you botch it at any point out there, the car's going to get fucked irreparably. Yeah. Are there any other cars? Do we see any other cars on the way in? Automobiles? So, uh, uh, not generally. There are a couple of what look like horse-drawn carriages. Um, not much in the way of cars. Anything that's off-road worthy? Not in There's this us. period. Us, yes. Humans and horses are the two biggers. Horses? See if we can round up some horses, maybe? You might be able to find some horses. Well, probably ponies rather than horses, but yeah. Either way. Uh, I mean, I I appreciate that this is purely out of character right now, because I'm not even there. Um, I appreciate the sentiments of what's going on, but um, don't we all have legs? And uh, and also on that, actually, before you go looking for horses, do any of you have a ride? No. I'm an officer, uh, surely. If you didn't buy, if you, take ride, if you didn't take ride, you cannot ride a horse particularly well. There isn't a skill for ride. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's is absolutely there? a skill for Where? ride. We even used uh, what's it called? Dark Ages. Dark it's Ages got it. core. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the skills. Uh, it's not a default one, though. Right? Yeah, it's not one in this in this character list. No, it's not in the character list, but it's it's on the fucking sheet. Uh, it's not. We've got the modern sheet. It's got drive instead. Yeah, yeah, no, I realise that, I, but I mean, it's in the fucking core rulebook sheet. And, and like, you'll, you'll, I'm, I'm happy for you all to do many things, but driving, driving a horse, riding a horse in 1919, though not an uncommon skill, is not automatic. 
I mean, I will just throw this out there. I mean, I've actually ridden horses, and it is not as easy as people make it look. Yeah, uh, and uh, riding a horse to track someone down, and ponies as well, stubborn, spiteful beasts. <laughs> is there history to that? It, it's called spiteful knowing beast. that ho- uh, ponies are stubborn, spiteful beasts. And they're bicey little fucks as well. Yeah, man. Um, you don't fuck with ponies. Well, I guess we're trekking then. Um, I'd like to look for some wellies. You can source wellies in a Yorkshire pub quite easily, I would say. That's not even a roll. Yeah, so even in your size, it's not going to be a difficult. That's good. I guess we're taking a walk then, lads. Lads? Lads isn't a word. Gents. There we go. <laughs> yeah, lads would be a bit common, I would say. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I'll leave most of my toolkit in the room, but I'll take my torch and my magnet thing, so I guess I'm just leaving my camera. Yeah, and I mean, you cracked the lens last night, and something weird happened with the magnesium in the flash anyway, so... Can I make sure, um, if we don't really have one in the party, getting a compass, just to make sure... I'd say it's probably pretty reasonable. It's the Yorkshire Moors, you're expecting to do some orienteering, a compass is... is... An, uh, an acceptable thing to be able to retrieve from the boot of your car. Yeah. Is there like any like uh uh I don't say like a first aid pack, but like for like uh you're out on the moors, kind of like a splint or something like that, like a, 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 like a I guess a first aid pack for like the Yorkshire Moors, basically. Do you have any medicine? Uh, I don't. I- I'm just looking for a pack that we could then apply. I don't think they'd have a first aid pack. I- I'm not sure those are like commonplace in this day and yeah. age. I don't believe so. If you've got medicine, you might be able to put something improv-wise together. I've got craft. I think this survival. Is, this would be medicine. Uh, yeah. Survival would get you a splint out on the moor, but it's not going to get you like you know a scavenged first aid pack out of the pub. Okay. And otherwise, uh, unless there are any objections, the five of you begin trekking out. After you um, go. I'm going to grab a shotgun. You just assume that a Yorkshire pub in a rural area has a shotgun. No, I've got I've got shotguns in the back. That's fine. You could probably find a shotgun in a Yorkshire pub in a rural area. I was anyway. going to say, it would be a safe bet either way. <laughs> yeah, it's an extremely <laughs> safe bet. That was very mocking outrage. <laughs> uh, I've got a pistol and an umbrella. I'm I'll have my also. pistol on me. I'll see my little ways, just have my pistol on me and a holster or We should probably also double check in with uh, Holden Twite and Reginald Foxley Smythe what guns they're taking, if any. Or other accoutrements. Uh, I'm going to be taking a. Oh, I'll probably take the elephant gun. There's a good amount of ammo for that. It's going to be heavy, so I'll probably take uh, two Webleys and then maybe a shotgun on the back. And the bag of sandwiches. Yes, indeed. The bag of sandwiches is important. <laughs> I'm so mad. Do we have any grenades in the in the back of the? If you've got any, like you've got quite a few. Uh... It's extremely unlikely I'd be carrying around grenades. Okay. Half the time in World War One, you weren't even issued grenades. You just made them out of jam, <laughs> fucking jam jars. We did as well let him have an elephant gun. I feel like that's where his armory five is going. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I'm going to take some extra ammunition for my for my pistol as well, actually. Uh. So, I'll take a couple of weapons, whatever I can. We have a lot of armory. This gun, this car is mostly guns. The, rather, this car I, is mostly- I, I am just not applying realism rules to the boot of your car. Yeah. At all. Um, you just have magical boots. Can I find any um, aftershave or anything strongly smelling? Uh, Sh- sure. Around. Why do you want it? <laughs> you had a really bad night's sleep. Werewolves. Extra strong smell. Throw it in the nose. They're fucked. Uh, they probably won't leave the wood, so I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> just in case. You find a particularly smelly uh, an aniseed spirit from behind the bar strongly scented licorice whiffs up at you. Okay, Stop, can so I roll a mix cult. sure it's well sealed? <laughs> Sorry, Benji? Can I roll a cult 
to realise that I should be looking for silver. I think it's pretty fair that the rest of y'all seem to have come to some kind of conclusion about werewolves that I would not say is metagaming. Silver is a pretty common basis of that. Wolfsbane might need a, an occult role, but I'll, I'll let you look for silver if you want to look for silver. Yes. Okay. That I mean, be... you did also mention it was a full moon last night, right? I did, yes. Okay. That would be a perception ledger domain, I guess. Um, or sleight of hand, whatever it's called in the modern day. Modern nights, rather. Um, difficulty, uh, we'll call it Div 8. We haven't got leisure domain. Subterfuge? Let's have a double check on your shit. Streetwise? I would have said larceny, but it's... <laughs> yeah, sorry, larceny is the equivalent. Yeah, I've got larceny. Shame. I'm going to spend a willpower. <laughs> <laughs> and good thing I did too. That's still two successes. Oh, yes. I thought you said nine. No, I did eight. Yeah, you, you have a look around, and, and for the longest time you can't find anything, until you notice, slung over the fireplace, what appears to be a pure silver marshmallow toasting fork, about the same length as a human forearm. A beautifully engraved handle. Well, a little bit of bullets, but hey ho. A little bit this of brief butler's testing shows you that oh, this is definitely silver and not just electrum plating. What is the melting point of silver? Uh, it's just one thousand. Yeah, it is actually quite high. Yeah, sorry, you you can't easily um, make these into bullets. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it, it, the trope is silver bullets, but silver would make a- if you tried to make silver bullets, they would make absolutely crap bullets. No, it actually, I think it says that in Hunters Hunted is that like silver bullets are, are objectively bad, and you, whilst they might make work, silver plated bullets, yeah, silver plated bullets. If you made them out of pure silver, they would be absolutely worthless because yeah. <laughs> they'd completely deform as they left the barrel, yeah. and then you completely fuck your own shot. It's one of my favourite, like, production, really right? dumb, one of my favourite, really dumb, um, what's it called, uh, Dwarf Fortress facts is that adamantium makes a fantastic cutting edge because it's, like, lightweight and super sharp, but a really shit hammer because it's so lightweight that it's actually slightly lighter than cork, which means it hits with about the same intensity as styrofoam. Which I find <laughs> extremely funny from a, like, weapons development point of view. <laughs> I feel like you need you need silver buckshot. That way, you get the most bang for your buck, both literally and figuratively. I was well, ironically, firing a shitload of silver cutlery out of a blunderbuss is probably the most effective that way to beat to kill a werewolf. <laughs> He's not wrong with a gun. But how did you defeat this werewolf? Grandmama's hand me down silverware, and grandpapa's hand me down blunderbuss. I mean, <laughs> ideal circumstances. <laughs> Ideal circumstances, a smooth bore cannon filled with all the village silver straight down the gulp. <laughs> Even the silver does nothing. It's a lot of things that go down the gullet at once. Technically, preferably when it's not expecting it, but that might be difficult. <laughs> Mildred, top floor of one of the houses, just casually aiming a blunderbuss, trying desperately to angle it. So that not all of it falls out. I'm always one. Mildred. I can't. Yeah, I want to run a fucking World of Darkness game that doesn't have a Mildred in it, who's incredibly aggressive. Like, when so was the last time anyone was actually named Mildred? I think it's one of those names that's going to die in the next period. generation. Yeah, about this time period in English history. So, tuning fork to hand and your assorted weapons behind you, the five of you begin traipsing out. After um, I would like it noted that the shotgun is broken over arm. That's fair. Yes. I like to think the umbrella has a hook and it's just like all over my wrist as I walk. <laughs> Keeping a jaunty pace. Oh, uh, uh, young Nicholas, do you want my sword cane that I have? Because I made a list of five weapons that I would have and one of them was a sword cane. Um... Uh, no, I, I've got the umbrella and I've got my pistol. I don't have another arm, so... <laughs> I I'm Presumably right. you have a holster for your pistol. Stamina yes, Athletics, but... <laughs> Diff 6, from whoever's setting pace on following the publican. Uh, what was that? 
Stamina Athletics Div 6 from whoever is setting the pace. I'll do it. As we're walking through the town, does it look eerily empty and devoid of life? Didn't we just I, go straight out the back? Onto yeah, the I think from the, from the way we'd constructed things, it seemed like the, the inn essentially opened right onto the back of town. So it might be a couple of houses to either side, but you could see like clear onto the moors, right? So you, you wouldn't have walked through town to get out here, basically. Sure, but am I hearing like any sound of like village life? No, it's quite early, but even so, you're not really hearing anything. Even Actually, now you come to focus on it, not even birdsong. I make the rest of the group aware. Are you hearing that? And then someone needs to say... Hearing what? Exactly. The steady clip of men at action uh, takes me back, sir. Um, but yeah, um, even though I don't actually respond in character, um, my senses are going to be heightened and uh, my paranoia is going to kick in somewhat. On a diff six with three successes, Captain Popajack sets a fairly rugged pace. We're men of the army here. You're confident that you'll be able to catch up with the publican by brunch, even as they make their wandering way out into the wilds. That feels like a relatively good spot to leave it. Unless anyone has anything they desperately wanted to get done before the episode break. Amazingly. Yeah, I'm going to shoot Holven in the back and just say that there was a grouse running by. <laughs> uh, it's a shame, isn't it, sir? So there's no grouse on this moor. It's a wonderful day for a shoot. Yes, but, like, uh, what was that American politician that shot his um, bird's Cheney. error? Yeah, that's, so, why I, that's why I said, don't you Dick Cheney me. Yeah. But, I mean, we could. So. And one day we will. <laughs> God, stop quoting always, Sonny. So, uh, any reminders for next session? Anyone have anything they want noted down? Town dead silent. Sorry? Uh, the, is it town? Is it village? It's dead silent. I think it's the hamlet, technically. But, yeah, okay. the hamlet. It, we've been describing it as a, a town, but it's essentially a village with pretensions. Yeah. That's what's any other uh, reminders? Seething rage, smouldering like a burning ember, slowly growing. Everyone hates the communists. Uh, we have a bag of sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. We need to take stock on how many and what kind. Yes. We're not doing. Imagine if right if he just made all the food. Yeah. I just wrote everyone hates the sandwiches. God damn it! Everyone hates. The everyone loves the sandwiches. <laughs> There's like some some pickled cheese, some cheese and onion. The worst bit about it is the knowledge that you're making it a thing. If I run a fucking sci-fi sorcerer's game set on a trip to Mars, you're inevitably going to wind up carrying a bag of sandwiches around the fucking ship. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, obviously. What else will we do for sustenance? (laughs) At least we're taking (sighs) eating into account. Run into some fucking feral world in 40k with a load of tribes people who base their entire wealth system on how many sandwiches do you have at this exact moment? (laughs) What is their degree of edibility? Um, (laughs) The next character is going to be lactose intolerant (laughs) and has really picky about the sandwiches. Like, has that got any? (laughs) Do we have any? Deposit paid off for the canny investor pulls out moldy sandwich. (laughs) I don't want to encourage you. Any other reminders? (laughs) Uh, um, we're following Matey Do. Following the public. None of us have had any sleep. Mm. They did sleep. That's the point. Yeah. Apart from a lack of um, gaining willpower, like, do we actually gain any negative modifiers or anything? Not for the first night. Okay, cool. Oh, fuck. Not for the first night. <laughs> I did. Well, I was thinking as up quick, a couple of days. I was. I was thinking as it happened, right? Going, oh, Carl, you jabby role-playing bastard! You will see no consequences for your sass. Uh, any other? Any other highlights? Any other reminders? Big werewolf was semi-immune to uh, magic. Semi, yeah, big, but fair. Big Gribbly in the woods was immune to both magic and gunfire. Need to curse and then fire. Um, the proletariat will arise. <laughs> oh, Ollie, I figured out what the reminder from Ghosty Boys was. 
Oh yeah. It's it, it was like, comment, and subscribe was what the acronym stood for. Um, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, fair. Uh, any other reminders? Uh, convince Tango that his camera flash is super powerful. <laughs> oh, but I'm not bringing it with me on this. Excursion. No! Fair, fair. Anything else? <laughs> cool, in that case, questions... Uh, uh, question. Sorry, no feedback. Anything you liked? Anything you disliked? Anything you'd like to see more of or less of ne- uh, next time? That's not being able to roll at all. Jesus Christ! That was horrific. I am so sorry. sorry. Such good, got such good pools as well. <laughs> no. Well, nature abhors a munchkin, unless his name is Oliver Thurston, in which case they gave make them a jammy fucking coins. <laughs> like uh, I still can't believe the way I've been rolling. Something is terribly wrong. Is beautiful. I, I, I like it, right? Like, watching watching Carl do really well, and that sense of creeping uncertainty sneaking into his every decision. Beautiful. It's just when I roll, like, all ones. <laughs> this is real world, like, like, character building. This is this is real world storytelling. As the story evolves, the the story of Carl as an RP player. <coughs> Any other feedback? No. Cool. Any question? Questions? Anything anyone was uncertain of in this session? Is everyone following the plot? Yep. Yeah. You're about following. Uh, how dead would I have been if I got a super fail on the car coming through the bar? <laughs> if you got a bosh. I'd yeah. probably not have killed you, but I'd likely have charged you a limb or something. <laughs> GM Wait conductor. me, brother. One limb, my good man. One arm, please. I did. Oh, I did find if I it. lost an arm again on another foot. <laughs> I did find <laughs> it. <laughs> well, you know the Yakuza, when you fail, you lose a finger, right? I did find it uh, deeply, deeply noble that even seeing that the enemy kept, like, Hucking cars at you and fucking destroying the building around you. Someone still is like, "Why don't we just fix bayonets and charge them?" That might work. We don't conclusively know until we try. And, and might I add, whilst they had a height advantage, who the fuck said, "Let's go up there and fight them"? I did. You fucking trash bag. Well, it was a beautiful. Usually, it's the that say that. Who's the <laughs> now? I got out my big right. Literally, Ollie. He's he's got ideas above his station. <laughs> Not right. Dear. Uh, any other narrative feedback? Uh, narrative feedback. Narrative questions. Nothing from me. I think that's everything. Uh, cool. Let's do some looks. Pull. Looks. Yes. That. Cool. Oh no, I got the template set up on this one. Um, plot progression. Does anyone feel like we made any significant plot progression this session? Yes. Oh, we made it to the town. It's true. You did make it to the town, and I expected you to get to probably session one. <laughs> <laughs> We've only burnt local. out of two pubs. I don't and know if got three. to the town and met a local can be applied separately. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't burnt down another pub. I think that's... If any, I mean, there's more character development, actually, to be fair. Uh, um, I had a spooky dream and associated it with a white mountain. It's true. Yeah. We've started following a lone townsman walking up onto the moors suspiciously. Yeah, we have engaged plot hook. <laughs> We're the best and deserve XP. <laughs> Engage plot hook. All right, I was kind of following you up until the uh, we're the best to serve XP line, but otherwise, yeah, that's valid. <laughs> it, uh, it, it tracks character development. Does anyone feel they developed their character this session? And if so, how? Um, I say it's kind of a twofer. Um, so I, I've developed my class, uh, sort of classism, I suppose, and at yes. the same time, like I mean, it's up to Ollie to say, but I feel that he's developed his uh, Bolshevik scumbag a little bit. <laughs> I take umbrage with the term, but you're not wrong. I have developed okay. my idea of a fairer class system. I make the richies sleep on the sofa downstairs. Like the worst thing is, personally, I am right with you, but in character, I like 
It's, it's oh. difficult. I don't think anyone's here. To be fair, I don't think anyone's here either siding with the USSR or the like British class system. <laughs> but it is deeply funny watching the two of you argue it out. You mean Damned Bolsheviks? You mean having Benji, who has Carl's little lapdog, argue it out on his behalf? It's true, actually, yeah. Uh, the major danger, of course, is Ollie, noted munchkin that he is, may actually start reading into communist literature. So, if, if I start hearing comments about the dialectic... <laughs> any other uh, character development this session? I've never read into any communist like literature, but I suppose if any time was the right time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, any other character development? I think it's... Uh... Fair, fair. Excellence of role play. Does anyone feel like, develop, uh, feel like anyone else role play particularly well this session? I want to point out when I said it was quiet, and then Carl said it's too quiet, and I said exactly. Like, I know that wasn't in character, but it was still role play, I think. It was sense. kind of in character, I think. I'm pretty sure you got there. I think um, both Polly's and Benji's RP of. Get the fuck out of the room and no fucking make me, you class bar, you class um, um, traitor. It was <laughs> the most literal class struggle. <laughs> um, Chris putting change down to pay for his uh, drink and then putting it in the till after oh, it wasn't taken. That was actually really sweet. I like to be cheese passive aggressive sandwich making. <laughs> Young Nicholas and his framing of all his magic as looking down on people through the lens of did you go to Eton? <laughs> <laughs> that werewolf went to Harrod. I mean, I've been to Eton. Harrod. It's not Har- Harrod's is a shop. <laughs> Harrod is a place. I go there every time I go to London. I don't mean to Harrod's in I'm years, going on a limp here, but I'm almost certain it just sounds like a place name in the UK. Yeah, I'm sure it's a place somewhere, but it's not like a famous um, finishing no, school. No, I don't want... I suppose Eden is not a finishing school. A preparatory school. Preparatory finishing, school, school of, finishing school for girls. You're not wrong. But in my defence... Uh, yeah, okay, I guess it's Harold, but that's about it. <laughs> As a town. Oh, that's no, a painter, my bad. The, the town of Harold... Yeah. No, you know what? I'm not engaging with him. Um, <laughs> cool. So in that case, I made that out to be nine experience points for session number 32. Uh, that's three points of plot progression, got to the town, associated slash sus the spooky dream, and following the lone townsman. Two points of character development, that's Thornbury develops his classism, Twight develops his class, uh, and Twight develops his class consciousness. Um, three points for the whole Michael Caine in Zulu sequence. The literal class struggle. Woodrow Tango is a good boy who pays for things. Passive aggressive sandwich making. The fucking sandwich making again. Oh my god, I still can't react. <laughs> and only eaten boys are worth anything. Plus one standard. Which what was that? Us- Nine. <laughs> Which brings us on to everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlights. Mr. Ollie, do you have any highlights for that session? Um, winning the bedroom fights. <laughs> that was kind of um, beautiful. I, I don't know about anyone else. I was fully expecting Benji to wipe the floor with you. Also phrasing. <laughs> Not going anywhere near that one, from Carl. Carl's. Um, well, I suppose. I suppose Carl's character. Are you Woodward or are you Red? Your Wood Woodrow, right? I am neither of those. Oh, Sebastian, Sebastian, Sebastian Thornbury. Sebastian, yeah. So, uh, Sebastian Thornbury's simmering, li- quite literal simmering rage. <laughs> fair, fair. Anything else? Uh, uh, passive progressive sandwich making. Fair, fair. Anything uh, else? Swiping passively aggra- uh, passive aggressively made sandwiches. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, just keep it, keep giving them to me, man. Yeah, um, and I think. Going out to put my weapons away, then coming back in and this not dying. This is already going to be too long. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to put that one, how to phrase that one in a more succinct manner. Doesn't die when going out where all the werewolves are? I guess going out into the dark to face a gribbly. In and out with the werewolf. 
All right, in and out with Wales works. So <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Creed asking us to what? save. His... Creed asks for his equipment to be saved before him. That's true. Unless you've got winning the, the bedroom fight and then in and out with the werewolves. <laughs> Look. What Ollie gets up to in his own time. On my own completely fairly won bedroom. <laughs> Anywho, uh, Benji, do you have any highlights for that session? The party already begins to fracture. <laughs> oh, long class line. <laughs> the only, role, like, only good role is to save a teammate. I don't get that one, actually. What was that for? No, my only good role this entire session was to save Creed. Ah, that's fair. No, that's true. Creed made one on your behalf. That worked quite well. But I'm still letting down. Uh, fair, fair. Anything else? Benji? Uh, no, that's, no, that's fine. Cool. Um, Creed, do you have any highlights for that session? Yeah. Uh, I didn't take good notes of them, but are the dogs communists? <laughs> what I think of discussion during our werewolf hunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why weren't they killing me? Like, they're on my side. Dear, dear. Anything else? Uh, I wish I remembered the exact quote, but something along the lines of, I am sentient, you fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get that one, because that was a young Nicholas thing, but in context, it didn't make sense. <laughs> I, was, I was looking down at it in the status, it was like... <laughs> yeah, but he thinks, that, he thinks the werewolves aren't of, sentient. But like, yeah, but like a dog is sentient, right? It's not sapient, but it is sentient. Sapient, yes. It, it, yeah, but he got the wrong thing. So Self-aware. You, can, you, like, you can't scream at an animal that's clearly sentient. I'm sentient, you <laughs> fuck. But it's obviously not its problem. Just, oh, damn. Um, any of the highlights, Creed? Uh, uh, Carl's luck curse. <sighs> Beautiful. Anything else? Uh, that's it for me. Cool, cool. And on the subject of Carl, Carl, do you have any highlights for that session? Whimpering moans from upstairs. <laughs> fair, fair. Anything else? Uh, rise of the sandwich economy. God damn it. God damn it. The origin story I never, ever wanted. <laughs> uh, uh, a flash and a bang. <laughs> God damn it. That's a fucking line from a lower low. There was a flash and a bang, and then everything has gone silent. And then the grandma goes, Ah, it was ever thus. Okay, then. That kind of worked out, I suppose. Do do you want to hear something really weird? Of all countries to also be really into a lower low, Sweden got a lower low. They dubbed it into Swedish. That's odd. Right, it's really Why? odd. Why? Are you trying to find the inflection and the accent. In I a don't. Sense? Apparently, the jokes carry just as well. Mm. Yeah. Anywho, anything else? Uh, not paying, but paying. Ah, uh, I can't like because yeah, I don't know a way of saying it. It's like uh, could have gotten away with not paying, but we paid anyway. In the second part. <laughs> like anyone got a, a good like raising? You're all communists secretly. <laughs> Honest Tango pays his tabs. Also, yeah. I don't think communists are that big on capitalism as, as well, anything but as uh, like transitive measure. They paid their fair way. They didn't cheat the worker out of his work. And I know that's, you know, it's not hardcore communism, but, you know, they didn't screw that's true. the... Stepping stone communism. Exactly, yeah. Baby this, steps. This is what, exactly what I mean. Ollie's on the, like, baby's intro to communism page on the internet now that probably exists, reading up on the basic tenets. Mm. Colour red good? Colour red indeed good. I'm definitely working a hammer and a sickle into this at some point. Just <laughs> like talking Russian. Like, <laughs> talking just the before last. Like the random comrade, like, kind of getting thrown in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Dovery There is actually the little red book for children. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Um, and okay. uh, final. Uh, stoking the flames of rage. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, and finally, last but not least, Mr. Nicholas of the Young family. Uh, Any highlights? Uh, meals on the run. I see. Any other highlights? I would say meals on wheels, but it didn't quite work. No, we were meals on wheels. Uh, you were the meals on wheels this session. Uh, I was talking about the guy we sent off. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I forgot about that horrifying <laughs> thing Benji did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fucking class, Tracy. Uh, I judge less as that like was an nothing act of to do with class. But you had a like get out of jail free bingo card. But something oh, like, yeah. oh no, I don't want to go into the horrifying nightmare of the underworld. Uh, uh, well, I mean, the door only stays open for like an hour as well. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. It's not safe. What happens if the doorway gets destroyed as well? I can open a new one, and it can lead literally anywhere. Okay then. <laughs> what are we open it again? I'm I'm probably slightly constrained by the bounds of the map, <laughs> but it could lead anywhere on the map, which would almost certainly have resulted in cat clock point. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, How many tea has made a communism for kids' uh, book as well? The sandwich tradition begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's bollocks though, right? Because we do another fucking prequel. You're hundred percent going to get sandwich crazy in that too. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh... <laughs> That's a true secret. How early did the sandwiches begin? Yeah, it was. Did the order of the hat invent the sandwich? Actually, I yeah, I'd like to rename that to um, can you see the, the traditions uh, sandwich tr- the sandwich tradition deepens. <laughs> The sandwich was invented in 1762 by John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich. I think he might have been in the Order of the Hats, though, even. He's uh, a minor I enough mean, figure that he could have been. I mean, to be fair as well, <laughs> the Romans and the Egyptians were eating things between two slices of bread millennia before that guy came along. Any- yeah, we could, like... Sorry. No, any other highlights? Yeah, Nicholas. Uh, the luck sponge strikes again. <laughs> I've never heard the term before, and now I want more of it in my life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, How does it feel? Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Any other highlights? Um, um, they're on the horizon. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be too long. It's going to do what the old... What's um, going over the hill? Is it a monster? Do you really want to ask that question? Because I can answer it if you like. <laughs> um, can't. The other thing. Um, to burn or not to burn? That is the question. We've had. I don't know what you're referring to. The um, uh, pub we didn't burn down. But I don't we think should've. that was seriously brought up. There was some. I think it was planned. There for. have been two uh, two highlights on a very similar theme already. I'm going to call no on that one. I'm afraid. Um, I think I think that's it then. <laughs> okay. Well, I think you covered everything from from my point of view as well. Uh, cool. So in that case, thank you all for a very entertaining session number thirty two, technically. Um, though I think I put the wrong th- uh, title on the uh, title episode number thing on the episode. Um, does anyone have any final words for the recording? And the class system. <laughs>